All right, so uh, we got the UVs done, which is fine. I didn't want you. Get out of here. Should die. Okay. Um, we got the UVs done, which was super fun. Uh, or done, so which was super fun. So let's go ahead and just uh, assign new material. So let's uh, click on the hypershade here. And we're just going to make a new material. So let's get rid of you. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a blend. Um, because I'm picturing this being more for like a video game kind of artwork. I'm not going to be as concerned about some of their stuff. So I'm just going to call this, oops, chair, not chari, chair underscore M-A-T. So that'll be the name of it. And we're just going to make sure we assign us all of it. The easiest way to do that is to select all of it. And then right click and assign material to selection. Boom. Now it's all got that material. That's great. Okay. Now, um, you may or may not know this. Um, <coughs> uh, but one of the things you can do is actually paint on the, um, the model itself, uh, inside of Maya, but it doesn't work real well. So I'm just going to show you real quick how that works. Um, because you might find that that's useful, uh, for you. So to make that happen, uh, if you were curious is you select the thing that you want to paint, um, because this is the reason why I, I find it useful. It's going to be a little bit hard because these are all separate objects. So it's not going to be quite as useful. Um, let's do this chair. So I'm going to select just this chair, hit shift I. We'll use this as a guide. So what you're going to do is you go to render, because this one's a little bit harder to tell. The other ones, because they're cushions and things, they don't really don't matter. The front of the cushion looks the same as the back generally. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, you want to switch to the rendering. And then you go to render, uh, texturing, 3D paint tool, hit the option box so that the tool settings come up over here. And then... Um, what you want to do is you'll notice that if you hover over it, it won't let you paint on it. So in order to paint on it, it's kind of sharp. It's a little bit sharp. Anyway, um, you actually have to assign edit textures. So click on assign edit, and then uh, you pull the slider around. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 4096, and I'm going to go ahead and do PNG. And we'll hit assign edit textures. So what that's going to do is it's actually going to create a texture inside of um, the 3D texture folder inside of source images. Well, I'll show you in a second. So this will be helpful because, again, if I go to the UR uh, texturing, can I get to it here? Yeah, bless it. We'll do it this way. Window, um, maybe it's under modeling, UV editor. If I go in here, um, you can see it's kind of hard to tell what's what. Like, I don't know what piece this is, per se, right? We didn't really organize this in any sort of way. I have a guess as to what some of these are, but it might be kind of hard. <clears throat> so what you can do, what I'm going to do is this. I can uh, I could paint on this. So uh, what I could do is, look, so I already uh, set up the texture. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to click on the color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, the front, I'm going to do kind of what this is, although this is sideways. I'm going to say um, things on the Z axis are blue. Things on the side are red and up and down are green. And I'm just going to do col light color for front and dark color for back. And that'll probably hopefully help me understand where things are. I'm just going to do it like that. So I'm going to go to color here and I'm going to choose light blue. And I'm basically just going to color light blue. Um, and it doesn't need to be anything great. So uh, if you remember, it's B is your brush size. So I'm just going to go a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to go ahead. And you can see you can paint right on it. And I'm just going to go like this. doesn't need to be great. I just need enough to know. And then we'll just kind of... Yeah, great. Okay. So I think that's everything that's front positive. So let's do back. And I'll just darken this up. And we'll go like that. Okay. And then we'll just do... Yep. Okay sure I didn't hit the back eh, whatever close enough okay so we'll call that the blue and let's go ahead and do um, my red come on red pop up there we go and we'll just go a little bit lighter which I guess would be pink technically so um, this really doesn't matter either because technically you know um, but we'll just go like this okay okay that's not, that's not what I drew um, eek. all right, and it's a little bit slow because it's got to like update. So I think that's everything that's that side, right? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the dark version, and I'm just gonna go wonk and wonk. Yep, 
looks great. And whoop. And whoop. And then lastly, we'll go like this. And then it's going to be green. So is it green? Yeah, it's green. Okay. We'll just go lighter green. And I'm just going to draw a line here. Draw a line there. <coughs> line there. And here. And then we'll just do dark green. And we'll go, woo -hoo. Okay. <coughs> now, you could actually try to paint things this way if you wanted. Um, you know, if, I guess if you're trying to roughly, like, just lay things out. Um, but we're going to call that good enough. Um, okay. So, uh, now what I need to do is actually save this. So, you see down here, you go save textures there's a way to update on stroke and save texture on stroke but i'm not gonna worry about that so we'll just hit save textures and that will actually save it good now um i'm obviously not going to use that but we're just gonna just just so you know it's there because it might be useful for you for something to try and figure it out so um so again i'm going to go back now to my modeling uh, modeling and go to the uv editor and you should be able to see the texture see you can see all it's all painted so I don't think we miss anything. Yay, good. Um, and now I can kind of tell by color coding what's what a little bit. It helps a little bit, right? Maybe. I don't know. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and uh, export these UVs. So we'll just go to image and UV snapshot. And I'm going to go ahead and again do a PNG. Uh, you could do any number of these, but I suggest PNG just because it has the... the uh, has a uh, transparency so that way you can have that alpha channel and make it a little bit easier to work with and we're going to go ahead and oh it doesn't really okay so we're going to do um what is it 4096 right so you might be curious as to why it's always these square numbers like you see 256 or um, 1024 or 2048 and what have you the reason why it's like that is because you may or may not know this but um when the computer reads um images it will read the images faster if it's in square numbers. Um, if it's weird numbers, then it, it has a harder time reading it. This is just a, a quicker way for it to, to function. So that's why we use those numbers. All right. Um, so it's going to go ahead and make sure, you know, you have the project folder. It's going to go ahead and put it into the images. And it's just going to be called Out UV. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure. So I'm going to go to Living Room Images. I'm going to call it Out UV. Out UV. Um, right and then hit save and it's going to x uh edge color we'll go ahead and go with white it's fine i don't really care and apply and close and that should hopefully work okay now what you're going to want to do is open up le photoshop so i'm just going to go photoshop and i don't know what version you have let's try 2020 i got like 12 of these on here for some reason <coughs> And that's going to load up. And while that's loading up, I am going to show you uh, what I did over here. So if I go to my, what is this one called? This is Living Room Maya. So if I go to the uh, project folder and you go to source images, and then you'll see there's that image that we made earlier with the, the blue and the green and all that. It's actually going to need 3D paint textures. Boom. And then here it is. There's that picture. Okay. So um, you might find that helpful. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But um, there you go. All right. So uh, we can actually bring that in as a guide as well, which I, I will. Um, so I think, can I just drag it into there or no? Will that open up? It will. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to switch this to uh, Essentials. And then we will file. Uh, I'm also going to open up the UVs. So was that living room? Living room Maya. And then uh, it went to images because anything that comes out of Maya goes to images. Anything going into Maya is source images. Open and boom, we have it here. Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but it's there. So what I'm going to do is I have this picture and I have the other one. So I'm just going to take this one. I'm going to control. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I hit control W, which I must close it or something. I don't know what that was. File, uh, open recent. Okay. 
I meant to do control A, control C, and then uh, control V, and I'm just going to put underneath my UVs, which if I control plus, 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 uh, you can now see um, those underneath, right? So I did it 496, which is good. All right. And I actually messed up the UVs because I only did it for the one section, and I didn't grab all of them and export the UVs. So good job by me. So let's close out of that. And let's go back in here. So uh, Q and uh, have nothing selected and hit Shift I. And then I'm going to select all of this and unselect this. And then now we will do uh, image and UV snapshot. And I'm just going to call it the same thing, apply and close, overwrite it. And then close that out and open up this and now open it up again. So I can just do open recent and since it replaced it, it should be correct now. So, and that's already in the thing. So I'm just going to hit control V again and I'm going to put it underneath. And I'm going to rename layer one. We're just going to call it UV snapshot. And I'm going to lock it so that way I don't accidentally get it messed up. Now, uh, you might find it a little bit hard to see, like when you're farther out. And I agree, it is a little bit harder to see. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to unlock this real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and do this as uh, lighten. Uh, for the layering um, and then uh, I'm gonna put this in a folder okay and we'll call this um, multiple shot multiple shot I don't know. and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna control J to duplicate it and then I'm gonna take this one and um, move it down a little oops uh, hit V first and then use the arrow keys to move it down a little Move it down one, and then um, control J, and move it up a couple like that, and then control J, and two, one, two, and moving it to the right one, and then control J, and move it to the left. Let me just control plus and see. Okay, so they're a little bit, let's see. There we go. So wanna, basically what I'm doing is I'm just duplicating it and I'm moving them all I'm moving them all like that. So I'm just moving them all one pixel off of it and then all that does is just makes it a little bit thicker so I can kind of see it a little bit better. Um, but obviously it's not 100% accurate so these are all just like this is the actual one. This one in the center. You can't even see when I turn it off. Uh, but that way, uh, let's collapse that, and I'm just going to lock it. That way I can see a little bit better. It was a little bit hard to see before. So hopefully that will uh, improve that. So now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to um, save this file. So I'm just going to do Control-Shift-S. Uh, save to my computer. And I want to save it to my Maya project folder in the source images. And what we're going to call this is chair underscore master. Okay. So the idea is this. Most of the time when you're working on your stuff, you have a, um, you have the one that's the production that goes into the actual whatever it is that you're making, whether it be a game or a video or what have you, and one that's like your working file. Now, the reason why you do that is this. If you were to look at this PSD, when I go to save it, it's going to be, I don't know, 20 megabytes, let's say, right? I, I'm just making up a number. But it could be. It could it could be, you know, 100 megabytes by the time. If I'm really, really fancy with it, right? You can have PSD files and get re relatively large. Um, but if I were to, and, and let's say that's got my color and all that other stuff in there. If um, I go to use that during, like, let's say, render time, Every time it goes to render, it has to load in that file, right? Or if it's in, like, let's say, a video game, right? That's a large file for it to load, both for the space and also for performance. So usually what you do is you make a master one that has all the layers and everything that you're working on. That's going to be a large file. But then when you actually go to, to produce the build, you will export out, like, a JPEG or a PNG or something that's compressed 
that only has that's a flattened image doesn't have any layers and that goes into the actual thing so this is going to be our master file um, when we actually go to put it on our thing we will use you know we'll just we'll export out something that's just like just the color and just the the bump and just the specular in this case i'm going to put all of those in just this one file and this is my file to work on but it's not the file that goes into actual production hopefully that makes sense anyway so we save that right into source images and hit save and then we'll hit okay all right so um the next thing i'm going to do is this and this is something i want you to do for yours as well um you're not going to use mine you're going to use yours uh it's not me it's you um I want you to do this. I got actually got to grab my file. I want you to take pictures of whatever it is that you're using, but I, I would just suggest doing uh, a chair like I'm doing, um, of like fabric of the chair itself, of different aspects of it that you can use for the texturing. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my pictures and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video, grab the pictures, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so I just took all that. I just used my phone because I don't have a nice camera. Uh, but maybe you do. If you do, use a DSLR or something, whatever you have. I'm just going to make another folder inside of my source images folder, and I'll just call this, like, um, reference images. Um, I wouldn't normally suggest keeping it inside of your Maya folder. Like, I'd keep it as, like, a separate thing, like, part of your projects. But we're just going to throw them all in there, so that way they're all in one spot. So I'm just going to throw that in there. And we'll take these, and I'm going to throw these in there. Okay. And then basically, I'll just show you real quick what I got. So I more or less, I took a bunch of pictures of fabric of uh, my couch. So you can see, I took, I would suggest taking a bunch of them, even if it's the same shot, because if you can see here, I got it blurry. So this one looks pretty sharp, but then this one, you know, trembly fingers, this one's also blurry, right? And that one's okay. Um, what I would highly suggest is actually, so you'll notice that these look different from here. These were taken inside. So the out, inside, obviously, is going to have more superficial lighting and things like that. But also, because you don't realize it because your eyes automatically adjust, but when you're outside, the lighting is much, much brighter. It makes less work for the um, camera to have to try and compensate uh, for what's going on. Like So it, it can have a shorter exposure. It can take better pictures, more or less. Okay. So I, I just grabbed one of my couch cushions, and I just dragged it out there. And then I just took different... Um, different uh levels of uh of pictures right so this is kind of an overall picture so i see what the cushion looks like um i also took pictures of the seam and my dog apparently uh because i might be able to use this on my seams of my um my uh my thing and there's another one there and another seam and then there's like a seam that goes down the side so i might be able to use that as well uh so these are the pictures that i have so what i want to do first off is we're just going to make a seamless texture so if you look, more or less, I have three levels. I have um, a close-up, a medium, and then far away. So i got to kind of look to see what will work. The far away one's actually not bad. Because here's what you got to think about, is that the more close-up that you get, the more it's going to have to repeat. And so if it has to repeat a lot, it's going to be more obvious. Um, but you obviously have to have enough uh you know en enough uh, resolution there in order to support it so um i'm thinking what i'm going to do is split the difference See, that's not too bad though um where's my that's stupid okay uh i'm going to split the difference i think and maybe grab the middle tier one so let's see which one was that is it this one We'll use this one. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to throw this into Photoshop. And I'm just going to show you how to make a seamless texture. Okay. So uh, I'm going to grab like maybe this section. Obviously you want it to be as straight as you possibly can get it. And then uh, kind of go from there. So uh, I'm just going to grab a section. And then I'm going to use it to make it seamless. So what we're going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to go to image. And I'm going to crop it. Now I could crop it this way. Actually, you know what? Maybe I will crop it this way. So I'm going to go to my crop tool. And normally, uh, you just do ratio. You just cut whatever you want. But there is width, height, resolution. Um, but I want to do a one by one square. Um, no, let's do... Uh, let's see. Can I do 1024px by 1024 px or not xp px 
Yeah, but see, that's going to resample it. I want to cut it down. I think I'm going to do it this way instead. So let's not do that. Cool. Cut it anyway. Uh, we're just going to go to image, and you'll notice that there's image size and camera size. If you use the image size, what that does is it actually scales the whole picture as a whole. If you do canvas size, it's going to scale the outside of the picture. So in essence, it will crop anything that doesn't fit in it. So we're going to do canvas size, and I'm going to switch this to pixels. And we're going to do, uh, let's do 1024 by 1024, because um, notice there's no resampling. And I'll hit OK. And hang on, cancel. And we'll hit OK. And give us more than the current canvas size. Some clipping, okay, that's fine. And let me see, will it let me. Uh, let's undo that. Let's. Let's unlock that first, because otherwise what's happening is it's it's um, cutting it when it happens. So let's do canvas size again. Sorry about that. Keep messing up here. 10.24 by 10.24. And hit OK. Proceed. And I'm just going to make sure I have the select tool. Yeah, see, now I have the select tool. See, it doesn't clip. If this was in background, it will actually clip it, which is not what I want. So I'm going to go, let's say, I'm going to find a section I think looks good. So we'll say that section looks good. Awesome. All right. So now what we want to do is once we have that, this isn't going to, um, it's not going to look correct because basically um, the, uh, the, uh, this side does not match this side. So we need to basically make a procedural texture. Okay. So um, let's fix that first. I'm also going to do this real quick. Let's do filter. And I'm just going to do a liquify real quick because I'm looking at it. You can see this line kind of waves. Ugh, it's doing the whole thing. Let's do this. I'm going to control A to select all. Um, eh, never mind, that won't work. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and do this. So um, we're going to go filter and we're going to go other. You're going to go offset. And if you remember, this is 1024 by 1024. So that means if I do um, 496, is that what it is? 496 by 496. All right. Now what I need to do is actually uh, cut this because it's it, the unfortunate what's happening is it's shifting the picture around. So let's um, select the whole thing. I'm just going to control X to cut it. And then we're going to go ahead and do control shift control. If you do control V. Oh, it did paste it in place. Oh, awesome. OK. That's, and I'm going to throw away the old one. All right, now let's go ahead and do filter. And actually, probably li liquify will work now, too. Let's go ahead and do filter, and let's do liquify. Good. Um, just because there's a little bit of a weird pattern here, so I'm just going to try and, like... I don't want to show backdrop. Why are you not... Oh, I'm on eraser. Ugh, I don't want it to move my... Yeah, never mind. Forget it. It's not going to work. Okay. Let's just do the filter offset. So um, I want to basically go halfway by halfway, right? <coughs> so um, we're going to do 512 by 512, right? Because if we take 1024 and divide it by half, you get 512 by 512, and then we'll hit OK. So basically what I did is, if you look, I took what was the top and shifted it this way, and I took what was the right and shifted it that way. So now all the seams are in the center. And what didn't look too awful bad now looks kind of bad, right? It's a little more obvious. Now, from here, you're going to have to decide how you want to go about patching this up. Um, there's the various healing brushes. I'm going to try and just do this healing, the wherever healing brush here. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold shift and then click here. It's going to draw a straight line through and hopefully kind of match it up. Uh, now, you can see it got rid of it, but that's definitely creating a pattern. So I'm just going to, I like to do more of a, uh, let's change this brush to a soft brush. I like to do more of a, a dabbing thing. Because I feel like it makes it, ugh, actually I don't like the soft brush. Let's undo that. Go back to hard. Go hard or go home, right? So I like to do a dab because I feel like it makes it a little less likely um, to show the obviousness of the pattern than when you do um, a straight line. But I'll try to do the straight line first because I'm lazy. 
and then just kind of dab this back and forth kind of thing in um, depending on the type of thing so like this is a really obvious kind of pattern you can also try doing this patch tool so you take like a chunk here click and drag this actually works the best is just taking various sections and going back and forth with it um, but you can see I'm getting really obvious lines which I'm not super super happy with okay so anyways we can make a pattern that way it depends on how good it works all right so now or more or less I have a, a stencil that I can use to kind of create my um, texture part of this okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and just grab this control a control C and we'll go to the chair master here right and then I can just paste it right in here control V and there we go so now what I'm gonna do is control plus 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 you can see this is obviously too large for what this is so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, scale this down oh I forgot the to a scale that's a little bit more appropriate all right and we'll go like that and i'm just gonna um control c control v see here's the problem see how when you do control c control v see how it automatically pastes it in the center that's what i was going to show you earlier if you select something and do um control c if you do control shift v it pastes it in the same spot another thing you can do also is if you hold alt and click and drag i'm gonna hold shift too so it keeps it it'll also create a duplicate that way and if I hold shift, it'll snap. So then I'm going to select both of you guys and hold alt and shift. Boom, right? And then I'm going to grab all four of these guys. And you can kind of see where we're going with. Oops. Oh, uh, shift C. Okay. Let's grab all four of you. Come on. And we're going to hold alt and shift. All right. And then we'll grab a bunch of yous, Alt and Shift. And then I'm just going to go ahead and merge all these. Select all of these together. So hopefully you already kind of know Photoshop. And we're just going to right click and merge layers. Okay, so that becomes one big layer. And control minus. Uh, okay, and then we'll just, I'm just going to snap this up here, and then I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. Boom. Select both of them, Alt and Shift. Select both of them, and then Alt and Shift. And let's select all of them again, and Alt and Shift. Ah, so it's stupid. And I'm going to do auto select so I can just select this and this. Alt and shift. All right. I thought, okay, there's auto select. There we go. Alt and shift. Ah, stupid thing. Okay. What happened to. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and just merge these all again. Uh, merge layers. And see, won't let me alt and shift and boom. Okay, and then we'll just take these two and merge these. All right, good. So now I have my my um, material here. Now, uh, so this will work both as like a bump as well as a um, a color and what have you. So, uh, but I'm just gonna use this as a texture we'll call it and then what I'm gonna do is I'll put a layer above it and we'll just call this one color so I'm gonna use this for color and I'm gonna switch so I want this to be more of a blue we'll say like kind of a, a cool blue and I'll just do boom and we'll paint it right so I'm just using the gradient tool 
uh, or the paint bucket tool. I don't know if you know this, but obviously that's G, right? So E is eraser, G is this. If you hit Shift G like this, you can tab through them. So if it's not the one you want, just hit Shift G. Uh, anyway, so when I do color, obviously it replaces it. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch this to color mode. And now that will actually um, put that color on there, all right, which is kind of nice. Now, let's say you want to do like a pattern on there, right? So I want to do like a flowery pattern thing. Um, all you could do is you could find that pattern and kind of do the same thing we did before with the uh, the fabric here. And I could do another layer, right? Make this also a color layer. And then just, you know, paint like, let's do more of this. Paint like, you know, the, or have like the fabric and then just paint like that pattern over top of it. And the nice thing is it's, it's regardless of what the texture component is. Okay. Um, now you might notice that this is like a little bit light. And the reason why is that that is not using, it's only adding color to it. So, um, if I darken this color, it's actually not going to change anything about it. If you want to change that, we'd actually do another one and we'll just call this like darken, we'll say. And I'll just paint this like a, I'll just paint it black. Like that. And then I would change this to a multiply layer. And then just change the opacity to how dark you want it. Right? And then if you wanted less blue, take the opacity of this down. And then you can play with those two numbers to lighten and to darken it. Um, to get the, the texture that you're basically um, looking for. Right? So, um, where are we at? Oh, I said we want. Okay. Uh, so if you look, you can kind of see we've got something kind of going on there. We got a basic texture going on. Let's see. All right. So uh, that works for that. Let's just. Um, I didn't grab any wood. I'm just gonna. So obviously this is all the same fabric colored, but this wood should be wood colored, right? So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and above the darken, make another layer, and we'll just call this um, legs. And I'm just going to use this good cubic pixels. And I'm just going to make it a brown, a brown color. And we'll just go like that. Good. All right. We'll call that good. So I'm just going to save that. Um, and we're going to call that okay for now. So. Um, Let's uh, export this out real quick because I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it next. Um, but you could go much farther with this. Obviously, I would add more layers to kind of break it up and stuff. But I'm going to show you kind of another way of using Photoshop that you may or may not like. Um, but uh, this is kind of a start. So uh, if you have a bunch of different colors, try to get all those base colors. Try to get the base kind of textures and things like that done. So I'm going to do is export out this stuff now. So I'm going to turn off my, um, my uh, uh, UVs here. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this. So we'll save as. Save to my computer. And good. And we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to... Let's just do a JPEG because I don't really care that much. And this will be chair. Color. Boom. Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to turn off these two. And then we'll save this. Control, Shift, S. Yep still onto my computer and we'll also do this as a JPEG and we'll call this chair bump okay and I kind of messed that up hang on a second we have to have the legs on there so control shift s again and yeah here we go don't show again and we're gonna save so I should have put the legs on because otherwise the legs are gonna be bumpy and I don't want that to happen so save over the chair bump hit save it doesn't matter if it's got a color because it will just take that as a um, the gray value. Okay, so let's turn that back off and good. Now what I need to do is this. I'm going to do another layer and we're going to call this specular. And what we're going to do is actually delete that. We'll just duplicate the legs. I'm going to take the legs and I am going to duplicate them. So control J and we're going to call this one specular. And what I'm going to do is use my paint bucket, 
and we're going to do kind of a a lighter mid gray and then i'm going to do black for the rest okay because the legs would have a little bit of shininess but the chair would not so this is going to be my specular layer so let's go ahead and save this one now and save this also as a jpeg and we will call this chair specular okay save hit okay all right and then let's just turn everything back on and just control s to save it as my master again and we're gonna call that good okay so let's go ahead and just load that in here just so we can see what we have so far so one of these select doesn't really matter actually just open up the hypershade let's go ahead and just attach all those and then i'll show you what we're going to do in the next video so boom uh so color ah so it's bringing me to that node that we made so i'm gonna click back in here so i don't want what's there already because we did that from drawing it so we're going to break connections right click break connections click on this choose file hit the folder and choose your color so it's been a heck of a lot more time than i did obviously on all of the uh the various things so um like you know adjusting your colors and specular again file choose the specular color map so specular open back here and then bump map click on that file and make sure it says bump and i usually change the bump that to like 0.1 because i find one is like a whole lot click on this arrow and this will get, go to where the uh, folder is or the where you make the connection and hit open and boom now we should have our chair okay so could look a little bit better so i'm thinking the thread count is a little bit um high and i also don't like the bump as strong as it is so i'm gonna select it or sorry don't need to select it just click on that the hyper shade and click on the material and if you click this it shows the inputs outputs and i'm just going to look for the bump and not the uv there you go the bump node and it's still too strong let's do 0.01 let's see what that looks like yeah, I just want a, a hint of it because it's not like a rough in housing. All right, so that obviously doesn't look great, but it does work at its most basic sense. Um, some of the seams are where the seams should be, so the, it just looks like stitching, which is fine. Uh, but we could definitely make it look a little bit nicer, um, and usually that involves doing like pre-shading and things like that. So what I'm going to do next in the, uh, is show you uh, how to texture yet again another way inside of um, Photoshop.